Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this nice little gift box with this ribbon handle and then inside I have these lovely shortbread biscuits which we eat a lot of. <laughs> these are a pound from the pound shop. They come in a really nice tin as well. You can see the little doggies there are all 3D and um, it's just a nice inexpensive gift that tastes delicious but you can obviously make the box really really special for it to go in so yeah straightforward to make pop that to one side and you are going to need so I've got my screw punch the papers I'm using are the Marie Poser first edition papers which are gorgeous and then I've already gone and got all my mats and layers ready along with my flower there that's my ribbon okay so I'm going to go through the scoring as we make it so you need a piece of A4 cardstock, okay, so I've tried to do it so the lid and the back of the, the box is all on one piece of cardstock to fit that um, shortbread tin. So this is a piece of eight and a quarter by, boy, by 11 and three quarters, okay, so it's the A4 length. Sometimes it comes just under 11 and three quarters, which this maybe just is, it's just on the line, that's gonna be fine, because that's what I'm using, so it will be okay. If you're gonna change your measurements, and you will have to obviously work those out yourself, I've done it for this specific um, gift. However, you can see inside, there's so much that's gonna fit in there anyway, so it should still be very handy. Okay, so along the eight and a quarter inch side, you wanna score at one and a half, and six and three quarters. Then rotate it along the longer side and you're gonna score at one and a half, and then seven and a quarter, eight and three quarters, and 10 and a quarter, okay? So you should have then this one and a half piece here, then this piece between the seven and a quarter and the eight and three quarters is one and a half, then another one and a half, and then that other one and a half piece. Now that one there, that last one, becomes the front piece here okay so if yours is a little bit out I will show you how we can just kind of tidy that all up anyway but you should just be able to make it work even if it's slightly under that length so that's that piece there then for the front of the box you need a piece that is eight and a quarter by seven and a quarter okay so this along the eight and a quarter inch side you want to score at one and a half and six and three quarters and then rotate and along the seven and a quarter inch side you want to score at one and a half. So you can see there that seven and a quarter inch width or height here is going to join with that seven and a quarter inch score line that we done on this back piece here. So you can see where Again, if you you know you, a lot of you ask how I come up with these things and how the maths all kind of works, everything just kind of goes together like a jigsaw puzzle. You can see that that bottom piece sits perfectly over this, and it starts up at that seven and a quarter inch score line there. So those are the two main bits. That's what's going to make our box. Okay. Then for the inside little lip, which you may not have seen, there's this piece here, which is separate. Okay, and as always, whenever I do those bits, I just do them freehand. So I've just got a piece of one inch by eight and a quarter, and that was just an off cut. Okay, so just keep that to one side until we get to it. I'll go through all the mats and layers as we do them. Okay, so first of all, we'll start off with our main back and lid part. So you just want to go around and just burnish all of those score lines. Okay, and what we want to do first of all grab my little snips, is in the landscape orientation, so you'll have this, that's your one and a half inch score line, you want that on your left hand side and then you'll have all these other pieces on your right hand side. You'll have these three squares, so there's one, two and three, you're going to cut down each of those score lines just to that score line there. So again rotate and do that on the opposite side. Okay, so don't worry about the bottom for the minute, I just want you to kind of understand how this is all going to come together. If you now were to bring that bottom one in like that, then that one like so, and that one like so, there is your hinged lid. Okay, now the ones at the very front, you want them to be the last ones, or in this case it's the strip at the very top, it will be the last one that goes down and it will kind of cover 
all the others but can you see when you do that you get all these bits hanging out and this is why I always like to take wedges off of things you know I always say in a lot of my tutorials just take a few wedges off because it will make it better when you go to close it and this is the reason why we do it because it, it eliminates all of this here so your, this outer one these two outer ones here you want to keep perfect you don't want to cut them because you want them to be that perfect one and a half by one and a half square now these two pieces here we do want to cut little bits away from them just to make it a bit more you know tidier so what you need to do turn it back this way so leave the outer one we're not touching that but these ones here just go in and take wedges off of the sides okay and then when you bring it round you should see that all conceals much better and then I also take a little bit off of the actual length so not much just a tiny bit taking about one eighth of an inch off not even that actually it's more like one sixteenth okay and again do the same on these ones so it's okay so that's now all prepped so if I just lie it down that's what it looks like we'll do this bit in a minute I just still want to focus on here again now when we bring all that round and cover it you'll see now you've got a really nice side and you can see everything's hidden away the the middle one here is where I've got this ribbon piece coming out now this is optional you might not want to add that but if you do you want to do your hole punch and kind of decorate this bit now rather than later because it just makes it a bit easier so to decorate the top here I've got well this mat is going to be the same for the three because um, I mat all of them so it's five by one and a quarter okay so I've got one two and three and then just the one on the top I've added pattern paper over the top but again it's up to you and that's one by four and three quarters okay so I'm just going to get those stuck down okay and then on this middle one here so this whole piece is five and a quarter so you want to come in halfway so that will be two and five eighths of an inch okay so that'll give you your center and you're just going to punch a hole so two and five eighths I'm just going to put my pencil there and just roughly I can see where the middle is there and then with my screw punch I can just poke the hole right through if you don't have that hole punch then um, you can just get a pokey tool and kind of work that through there. But now I've done the hole, that's all I'm going to do for the minute. I'll, I'll put the ribbon through, just tidy it up a bit. I'll put the ribbon through at the very end, but it's easier to do that obviously when it's all flat than when you've put it together. Now you can also decorate the back here. So I've got this piece, which is five by five and a half. So I'm going to stick that one down and then the side pieces are going to be stuck in on this particular one so you don't need to worry about it and then the base of this one here because this is all going to be stuck inside the other one you just want to remove these squares completely just take out any of the kind of bulkiness from the score lines as well like so I'm just going to take little wedges off of there and I'm going to take a tiny little wedge not much just a little bit off of the tops of that one there as well okay so that is now how that piece should look if I like that way you can kind of freeze the pause the video if you want you can just seal the little wedges I've taken out of those keep those ones perfect again little wedges little one off the top of these two sides Again down here and a little bit off of those there so it's just all prepared then you've got this front piece so again just burnish your score lines and then with this one you want to just cut in these two sides and again just take some small wedges off of those And again decorate this one so for the front I've got that same size piece as this one here 
So I'm just going to stick that one down in the middle. And then my layer to go on top is four and three quarters by five and a quarter. You can do that twice if you want to do it on the back as well, but I'm just keeping mine to the front. And then I've got these pieces to decorate my side panels. So to mat them, it is five and a half by one and a quarter. And then to layer on top, so you can see here how it's all going to look, these pieces are one by five and a quarter. So I'm going to get them all stuck down. Again, all these measurements will be on my blog. Okay, so sometimes it's just easier to decorate these things when they're flat. Now we're going to add some glue onto these squares here at the bottom, so onto the tops of them. Bring that one down and bring that one around. Make sure you get a really nice right angle because this is your front piece here. Okay, so this is all going to be see what everybody sees. And again, do the same with the other side. And fold that one in again and just stick that one down. Okay, so that is the front of our box. So now what's going to happen is these three sides here we're going to add glue to and they are going to sit inside like so. Okay, and you can see now it comes that one piece. So I like to do one at a time. I just think it's a bit easier and you get in, you know, less mess. So I'm going to stick my base down first. So grab your base, your front, sorry. And with the base, bring it in and stick that down inside of there. And just with your bone folder, just go in and make sure that's all spread out. Now, if you want to decorate the inside here, now's the time to do it. You could easily put a pattern piece of paper in there as well. And just bring it up into that shape and just make sure that it's all running nice and flush and you've got a nice back there. All right, you can see how, how quickly it all comes together. Okay. And then I'm going to add glue to this one side here. Again, don't go heavy with the glue. I never put loads of this glue on. And if you go right to the edges, just make sure you're, more, you're pushing the glue kind of to the edges rather than squeezing more out. Okay, and then bring that one up. And once you've got it all nicely lined up on the side there, it will just, it will just naturally go where it needs to. Just use your bone folder or even grab a ruler. You can get that in there and just spread that all out. Okay, so that's another side now. You can see just how nice everything is because we've prepped it all before. It should all fall into place perfectly. And then do the same with this one. And then kind of push it under first like so. And then it will again all fall into place. And you've got wiggle room. I've just pulled mine up a bit there just to make sure it was nice and flush with the top. And again, pop it on its side. My ruler. This ruler is exactly one and a half inches wide, so it fits in there like a glove. It literally, I'm getting from corner to corner, side to side, perfect. And there we go. So now, you can see, because we've already decorated it, it looks great. Next we need to stick all this down. So first of all, you just want to, again, do it bit by bit. So I'm going to pop glue on this inner one first. Like I said, you can add your ribbon right at the end. That doesn't matter now. But I'm just going to add some glue onto that one. And then the middle one is going to come down and go over the top. And you want to keep it at right angle. Obviously, you don't want to line up that piece to the bottom of this because we've already taken little wedges off of it so the, the sides aren't um, straight now so you just want to make sure you focus on the angle rather than the you see there rather than that side there don't line that side up with this because it would be out you want to make sure that your angle is nice and straight okay so that's that one there and again do the same on this side And then you just want to add glue to the insides of those last ones, which will be your square ones, because they're going to now cover everything and tidy it all up. Okay, now don't worry if this is all wobbling, because we're going to be adding that inside lip, and also obviously the Velcro 
on the flower is what's going to keep it all together but now you can see you've got your flip top part there then I've got these little squares to decorate the sides so I've got this one which is one and a quarter squared and this one is one inch squared each of those are going to sit on top like so and then they're going to cover these two sides here so I'm going to stick them down Okay, so that's my sides all decorated and yeah, we're ready to go. Now I also forgot that inside here, once I add my ribbon, I've got a piece of pattern paper in there as well. So you just need to cut another piece, that's this mat here, or any of these three that I showed you at the beginning. Um, but yeah, okay, so then you've got that piece that I shared earlier, which was that eight and a quarter by um, one inch, yeah, one inch. And if you watched me do quite a few of my kind of trinket boxes and stuff like that, and most recently was the dancing fairy music style box, we're now gonna add this inside here, but I always like to do it kind of freehand. So you just want to kind of roll up the whole piece there and pop it inside. But this piece right up in there like so and then kind of hold that piece there and then work this into this corner like so and just lightly pinch it, you can see what I've done there, just very lightly then keep that in that corner trying to keep it roughly the same height and roll it and bring it all the way down to this corner just make sure you're holding it each time between your finger and your thumb and just again lightly pinch it and then when I get to the very end here I just need to take a tiny piece off so I can just eyeball that I think that was roughly about there okay and then just bring down each one now where we folded and just burnish and again if you want to score and then burnish you can do this is a very strong this is that 300 gsm cardstock from paper mill direct so it doesn't crack but now i've got the perfect piece that sits in there and it gives me that nice lip which is what's going to hold our lid down so you want about I'd say about three eighths of an inch exposed. So what you can do is hold it where you want it and pop a pencil mark, kind of roughly. That's really done badly. <laughs> I can rub that all out. And again on the sides there, and on that side there. And then you know now that anything underneath that is where you can add your glue. So I'm just gonna not add loads, just enough to really kind of tack it in place, like so. You can use double sided tape if you want and then I'm just going to carefully bring that in. It just means you've got that little bit of wiggle room to get it all in place. And just make sure you look at it. What I might do is bring it down a little bit. I can cover up some of those pencil marks like so. Because this is only a smaller piece, what you can do as well is round off these corners here before you attach it. but. It doesn't matter if you don't, so sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And then just rub out those pencil marks. Now when you bring the lid in, just push those side bits in. What I tend to do is just curl them in ever so slightly with your finger and your thumb, and that just means each time it goes to close it will naturally go that way. But now they will fold and it will keep your lid down. And then once that flower goes on with the Velcro dot as well, that will hold it all in place more. So what I've gone and done is I've die cut and these measure two and three eighths of an inch roughly in diameter. And that is gonna stick on the top of the lid only. So if I just lift this up, it's gonna stick like that in the center. So roughly where my thumb is, I flip that over. That's where I wanna add glue. And again, I can bring that over, make sure it's all nicely lined up. And just get an even. I mean, you, yours is all, everyone's is going to be different, but I'm coming in. What's that one? Yeah, it's about one and a half. I'll move across a little bit that way. It's about one and one and three eighths of an inch. I've come in from each side. Just stick that down. And I've just got some Velcro dots here, so let's just pair those up. And just stick it on the inside of that piece that you've just stuck down, both of them. So I've got sticky on this side here. You can use magnets, personally, when it's something like this, 
that isn't necessarily a keepsake piece and this will probably end up going in the bin. I'd rather just add a Velcro dot, these are very inexpensive. Whereas magnets are obviously a bit more pricey and yeah, I'd like them to be kept so I tend to use them more in my mini albums and things like that. Once it's stuck, see I haven't been able to put too much pressure on it so I'm going to have to lift that up and kind of eyeball it that half. What I should have done is get what you want to put in there, pop it in and then do it again. So pop that on one side and then push down. There we go. You can push down then on that metal tin and then voila, my Velcro dot has stayed in place. You can just really again work that down like that. That nice, really, really nice. So then I'm going to add my. I've just got my heat gun warming up. I've got my ribbon here. So open it up, and what you want to do is feed the top through first. So okay, decide how long you want it. I'm going to keep mine about there, and then what I've done. Take that out now, because it's going to get in my way, is split that up and lie it down flat in the back there and then cover it with that other piece of pattern paper. Okay, so I'm going to just add some hot glue to that in a moment. While I'm waiting for my glue gun to warm up, I have also gone ahead and cut a very small little disc here, which is just going to go over the top there, just for a little bit of decoration really. There was no other reason for it apart from that, so I'm just going to pop a little hole in the center and again just feed that through and um, yeah it's just a nice little extra touch and this is a thinner paper so I need to make sure I don't rip it now but it should I've got a thick ribbon that I'm going through so I remember doing it with this one on the other one but it's fine there we go and I'm just going to add bit of this glue here because this doesn't stay tacky. Just a little bit around the ribbon there and then that can lie down on top. And there you go, just gives it something so it's just other ways to decorate. And pop that back in again, close it up. And then I've got this here which I've just used my flower punch and I've just made a really pretty little flower and that is going to go right in the middle. You could have a tag hanging down here as well if you wanted to. That obviously makes it look, you know, if you want to personalise it a little bit more. I've got these glitter um, glue sticks because I've run out of my clear ones but they're actually really nice. So I'm going to pop that right in the centre there and straight away now that just really makes it look very, very pretty. I love that. And then um, I can just lift it up and open and I'm going to just very carefully pop. You can put double sided tape on this if you wanted to but while I've got my hot glue gun here, let's pull this out a bit, I'm just going to run a bead just there on that side. Obviously watch your fingers. I do have the little silicon um, finger bits right in front of me actually, these here. Pop that on your finger, let me show you like so and then I always forget to use them and then pop another little bit of glue there and then you can just push that down and it just takes all the heat just like wearing oven gloves really but just for your finger so now that's nice and flat inside so now I can just add my pattern paper so again just cut like I said a piece that's that size there onto the top and there you have it really cool box I like that a lot it's got a nice closure to it and yeah, don't worry if you don't have the shortbread. You can obviously use that for many other things. Even a nice little scarf or something will go in there. Um, you could probably get some little miniature bottles of some drinks in there as well. I love it. I like making gift boxes for quite, you know, um, for like a specific gift as well. So I like that these fit this tin of shortbread in perfectly. And that obviously, that tin makes this really nice to hold as well because it's, it is the same width and everything. So it fits really, really nicely. So that's that one. And there is the other one. Really cute and I love those papers. That gorgeous um, hummingbird there with that um, spot um, UV. But aren't they lovely? 
Anyway, there they are. Hope you've enjoyed them. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.